trigger warning, anatomical and medical terminology. I'm going to use traditional anatomical terms because I feel comfortable with those terms when describing my own body, and it just feels like the easiest way to communicate. So that's what I'm going to do. You can totally use different terms for your body, and um, if you're uncomfortable hearing those terms, that is totally okay, but this video is going to utilize them, so you might want to skip it. So what was the progression of the IUI experience for us. How did it start? How did we pivot when it wasn't working? And how did it evolve throughout the end? Okay. At the beginning of IUI, one basically just tracks their ovulation and orders sperm. At least that's what we did. So we tracked my ovulation with a test and then the test would be like, you did it, you ovulated. And then I would go to the clinic and then they would put the sperm in me. While you were waiting, you'd usually get a ping on your phone. It would say like, new test result. And it'd give you tons of information about your sperm specimen. It would be like, their motility is super fast. Way to go. And there's 10 million of them. Um, most of them lived, yay! Most of them lived through the de-thawing process. So you'd get all this, these like stats about your sperm, it was weird. And then you'd lay on the table, they'd put a speculum in you, they'd expand your vaginal cavity, they would take the specimen, they would thread the catheter through the cervix. Sometimes we were told that they can't always get it through the cervix and sometimes they just insert it in the like vaginal opening, but that's not as good and a bummer. And so we were always like, you should do whatever you need to to get it through the cervix. Anyway, so they did. And it would be kind of like crampy and pinchy, but not that bad. It mostly just felt like a pap smear to me. And so they would thread it through the cervix, expel it. And then <laughs> I thought this was really interesting. So everybody always said that this was just not official, not medical, not science-based, but just superstitious. They would bump up <laughs> the edge of the bed. And so your butt would be elevated and they'd be like, just stay there for 10 minutes. And then they'd leave the room and you'd just stay there for 10 minutes and like watch TikTok or hang out with your partner. And then when 10 minutes had passed, you would leave. And I don't know why, but every doctor did it. And every time they said like, this isn't like scientific, but it just like, it helps. I would just sit there with my butt elevated. So we did that like three times and it didn't take. So then we started like being a little bit more aggressive. And what that looked like is taking some oral medication to encourage egg maturation and stimulate follicles to, to, to make more eggs. So instead of ovulating like one or two eggs, your body would ovulate like three, four, five, six, whatever eggs. And then when that alone didn't work, we started to do that plus doing ovarian ultrasounds. So I would go in and they would look at my ovaries via ultrasound and they would be like, yeah, it's working, really good job. You have four eggs, they're 18 millimeters across or 20 millimeters across and it looks like you're about to ovulate. So they would confirm like, yes, you are making mature eggs. And then we got even more aggressive and started taking shots of a synthetic pregnancy hormone. I believe it's called HCG, but I'm not totally Sure. Shots of that in the stomach, which would force ovulation. So we're doing everything the same. We were tracking my cycle, taking the ovulation tests. When it said I was about to ovulate, going in, getting the ultrasound, seeing the mature eggs, forcing ovulation. Then we would get all the information about the sperm specimen and, you know, we'd put them together inside my body and still that wasn't working. And so then we did this procedure called an HSG, which is basically where they make sure you don't have any blockages in your fallopian tubes and they did that under x-ray and then they shove a bunch of dye up there and it fills your uterus and then it fills your fallopian tubes and they're looking for it to fill your fallopian tubes and then spill out so they know that you don't have any blockages so that looked good for me i didn't have any blockages it was incredibly painful it was one of the most painful things i've ever experienced in my life i remember thinking during it boy if this is as painful as childbirth is i don't know if i can do it it was so painful like my whole vision went blurry i swear i almost blacked out it was Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. If you have to do an HSG, I am so sorry for you. My condolences. Thankfully, it's only like 15 seconds of your life, but it's pretty like white hot fiery ouchie. Anyway, so the HSG confirms that you don't have any blockages. And then also like a bonus is it's supposed to have this therapeutic effect for the one or two next IUI tries because it kind of like clears out your tubes. I guess it makes it easier for the egg to like travel where it needs to go, but that didn't help. That was like everything that we tried. And Gray did the exact same things. So Gray also did the oral medication to stimulate egg growth, the, growth, the shots in the tummy to force ovulation, the ultrasounds to make sure that there really were eggs there, the HSG, which they also said was really painful. And then finally Gray did one more thing. They had to have a s small minor surgery because they had a, a fibroid in their uterus that was causing some problems. And so that fibroid was removed. So, <laughs> There is a lot of troubleshooting that can happen when you are having fertility problems, and those are just some of them. So all of that happened through seven rounds of IUI for each of us for a total of 14 rounds of IUI. I really don't like talking about money when I talk about this stuff because like, I'm not quite sure, I guess. It just feels weird to mix like money and family, but I, I 
I really thought that it was going to cost like less than $10,000 for us to get pregnant and that was so not the case. So I do want to talk about money to again help folks potentially manage expectations. But just because we spent this much does not mean that you will spend this much. Like just for reference, every time we tried IUI it cost about like $3,000. And again we did 14 rounds, so let's just do some quick math. Yeah, that alone is $42,000, which sounds right. <laughs> and then obviously there was like the surgeries and the HSGs and a lot of the like blood and hormone panels. And I know that in the end IUI and IVF ended up costing about the same and that was around <laughs> $45,000. I honestly wish we would have pivoted to IVF faster, but like we didn't know and we were just following the guidance of medical professionals. We were trying to make the decisions that felt the best in the moment with the information that we had. I'm not mad about it in the end because I'm so in love with my kids. And if we would have done anything differently, we probably would have ended up with different kids. And like, I can't even imagine that. I specifically like the two kids that I have. I wouldn't trade them for anyone in the world. There's probably gonna be a comment that says like, well, you'd probably feel that way if you had two other kids. And maybe, but all I know is the reality that I live in right now, which is with my two kids who I love so much. So I'm totally at peace with the cost. It, it easily feels worth it. And I recognize that we are in a very privileged position where, I mean, it wasn't easy, but we were obviously able to do it because we did it and we're really happy. But if you are planning on starting a family with any kind of medical intervention, IUI or IVF or co-IVF or whatever, I would definitely, definitely sit down and like, I don't know, crunch the numbers because it can be it can be really economical, but if things don't go well, it can also ramp up and get pretty expensive quickly. I guess I kind of wish I knew that that was a possibility in the moment, because again, I thought we were gonna get pregnant with like one or two tries of IUI essentially, but we didn't and that's okay because that's what was meant to be. If you wanna know how all of this affected us emotionally and how Gray and I did manage our expectations versus reality, we did film a video about like expectations and it was pretty good, but truthfully I wasn't super happy with the video because it was kind of rambly and it was going to cover a bunch of stuff stuff that I was already planning on covering in this series and so I just wasn't super happy with it but I also didn't want to scrap it so I decided to post it. It's unlisted and it's on Patreon so if you are interested in checking that out you totally can but no pressure you absolutely do not have to and most of the information that we cover it's going to be covered in other videos so if you don't want to no pressure but if you want to hear us talk about that together that is a thing that exists but if I had to give any advice it would just be to really keep lines of communication open. Gray and I were constantly checking in with each other about like, hey, like, what do you need if this happens? Or what do you need if this happens? Or how can I support you in this moment? Because things were really hard. It was really surreal to try like 14 times and have all of the scientific information be like, you did ovulate, you have so many eggs, your sperm is like incredibly powerful and it's all in one place in your body. It was a mind fuck to um, have it not work for like two years. Because I think IUI, again, lasted like a year and a half or two years and then IVF took another between a half a year and a year. And funny story, I remember I probably took like 40 pregnancy tests. Like there was a part of my brain that stopped believing pregnancy tests worked. Oh, it was so sad, guys. Okay, this this is definitely a trigger warning for folks who are dealing with fertility problems because I feel like this is so relatable. So this is about pregnancy tests, but it was so sad. We would like stare so hard at the pregnancy test. We would like see the faintest line that wasn't really there and we'd be like, is that a line? Is that a line? And we'd take a picture of it and we'd send it to a bunch of people and we'd be like, do you see a line? And like there was no line, it was really sad. Uh, but anyway, my brain stopped believing that like pregnancy tests could be positive. And so when you take the shot to force ovulation, which is the synthetic pregnancy hormone, they warn you not to take a pregnancy test right away cause you will get a false positive. And so one time I like knowingly did it. I was like, I don't even think pregnancy tests work. And so I, right after I took the, the shot, I, I peed on a stick and it turned positive right away. I wanted to see what it felt like for my body to experience seeing that. And of course it was weird and sad cause it didn't mean anything and then I wasn't pregnant later so yeah it was really challenging but I am happy that we kept trying and I am happy that it ended up the way that it did because I we couldn't be happier yeah it was long and it was full of ups and downs so this was IUI and then in the next video that I post it'll be about IVF and I am gonna bring Gray in because they had a unique part in that that I didn't get to experience so you can you get to see Gray and I love Gray so I hope you uh, look forward to that and uh, yeah okay that's the end of this video I hope you liked it all right I know it was kind of rambling I, I, I just that's what I who I am okay bye see ya Thank you.